that give you the opportunity to do the right thing. This ain't one of those times. Ah, call 911. So I was talking to somebody very, very, very close to me about this movie. They're actually extremely close to me and they knew that I was going to see the movie. They knew that I was possibly going to talk about it on my channel. And it was like, Brandon, I don't care what you have to say. Anything with Denzel Washington in it is a 10. I'm like, oh, OK. Well, I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? My name is Brandon Keith Avery and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the Equalizer 2. I really do appreciate it. You know, and this stars Denzel Washington. I am a big fan of his. Pretty much everybody is. That is a given. Um, I love all of his films for the most part. Uh, this is also being directed by Anto Antoine Fuqua, a uh, big fan of his as well. Uh, he did The Magnificent Seven. Uh, he did Training Day. Of course, you know, those are all uh, Denzel Washington films. The first film came out in 2014, and this is a sequel. It's kind of funny behind the scenes. Instead of them calling this movie The Equalizer, they were us calling this uh, The Sequelizer. So I just kind of thought that was a little cute or whatever. And with Denzel Washington having over like 50 plus credits in like TV and television, you know, this is like, you know, his first uh, sequel ever. And I just kind of thought that was fascinating. Um, but the, the Equalizer, what it is about, what well, uh, Denzel Washington's character is a Lyft driver. And, you know, you can just kind of tell from from the very beginning and even in the first film that that's not really the life that he lives i mean his past he was ex-military special forces has all this training you know was delving in a lot of shady business cleaning up this cleaning up that doing equalizing type things when it is necessary and that's just kind of where you know his character is in this film as far as the part two that we're talking about now and it relating to the first one i saw no relation to it at all these really this really doesn't even feel like a sequel it just feels like you know a black man in a movie going around and kicking people's butts and if that's kind of what you want to see going into this for the most part you will be satisfied i mean and that's because of the lead denzel washington he's great when he is on the screen when he pops up you know he steals the room and just kind of gains everybody's attention i think he does that in real life i've never met him but he definitely does do it in this film and what i most liked about his character is just the confidence confidence that he has he is calm cool collected just in every instance you know in this film it's just like you know no matter what every when he walks into a room it's not even like he's doing it on purpose or his training it was like he was programmed to do this like from like birth like in the in the tube or whatever you know there you know he's just always calculating something and just trying to find out where all the exits are where you know all the a assets are and things like that and i just kind of just like that you know with this character and it, i can tell that it's a character because it, he is separating himself from the Denzel Washington that I know in real life, you know, to Robert McCall in this film. As far as the action is concerned and choreography, that, that was all great. It was all lovely. Uh, he's done, doing what he did in the first film where he kind of times how long that he has to take out his foes and things like that. And it's very, very entertaining if you do want to just go see a movie with, you know, a man kicking butt, a black man. As far as the stories are concerned, I said stories plural because there are multiple stories in this movie. You have your main plot and then you have a number of subplots. And there was a subplot that had to do with uh, another youth, another uh, black dude in this movie. And I liked him a lot. Um, you know, there, there was, I don't know his name. Um, I didn't bother to look it up, but, you know, he had a nice, strong presence. And, you know, uh, Robert McCall in this movie is just trying to get him, you know, out of the street life. You know what I'm saying? That really has no future unless you're going to end up dead six feet on the ground or in prison somewhere. And to me, I actually found that plot point more interesting uh, than the main plot point because, um, you know, it just really showed... Denzel Washington's character humanity in this film and you know it was you know just very entertaining and initially I thought that this was just going to be like just some little side story that they you know that you know you kind of see and you kind of forget about but they actually spent a lot of time there and that is something that I appreciate in the film but the one downfall that I have about that is they actually spent too much time there and trying to balance that with the rest of the films where you kind of feel like you're watching two to three or four different movies, you know, at the same time. I mean, like it just kind of had no relation at all. 
And the main plot point is, you know, I was interested, but at the same time I was watching it and I was just like, I really don't have any idea what's going on and who this character is and why they're so important and why they're trying to get this. And if they don't get it, what's just going to happen? I mean, I just don't know. I mean, from just thinking about it right now off the top of my head, it's just like, okay, hey, you know, some people from Denzel Washington's past are trying to do this and that, and, you know, and, and, you know he has to just take them down. And that's just really it. I mean, it's like uh, there's one character in here. Uh, we see him all the time. Actually, I don't want to tell you his name because I don't want to spoil the film for you. But when he popped up on the screen, it was so blatantly obvious that this dude was crooked, that he's possibly going to turn at the end, that he's just really the bad guy. I mean, they telegraphed this thing from 50,000 miles away. I don't know. It was just kind of a bummer. The ending of this film was just kind of anticlimactic for me. It really didn't do anything for me. And I found the whole thing just completely unnecessary. Like, why does the final showdown have to happen here? And I like Anton Fuqua for the most part and all the decisions he made in this film. But I feel that he was just reaching a little too far to have. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But I, I just it just didn't do anything for me. And with these films and Denzel Washington going around kicking everybody's butt, I know that he has training and things like that. Early on in the film, I like that he's able to use anything on him as a weapon. You saw it in the trailer. I mean, he whoops somebody with a credit card. You know, that's just freaking badass. I don't care, you know, what you have to say. I mean, it's the equivalent of a knife. Uh, the way he uses it in the film but the fact that it's just a credit card and he doesn't have to think about it he can just see something and just and use it you know I, I find that very fascinating the only down gripe that I have is towards the end of the film and they did this in the first film too is that some of the tools that he used to take down his foes I just kind of feel it completely unnecessary I mean like you didn't have to do that you didn't have to create a contraption to where it shoots the harpoon and cuts the rope and this thing falls down and swoops him on the leg and breaks it three ways and then when he falls down he knocks over this shelf over here that does this I mean it all may sound and look cool and all that but I mean if you could have just went up to him and snapped his neck shot him in the face or stabbed him in the stomach and get the job done why didn't you just do that I mean because there were just some kills in this movie to where I kind of found it completely unnecessary and it's like oh they're just trying to I don't know sir fanboys but I don't know anybody that would be a fanboy for uh, an equalizer film I mean I enjoyed the film I didn't hate it but at the same time, I uh, walked away just kind of like, yeah, that, that was cool. I mean, it was worth the viewing. But, you know, um, if I never saw it again, I would not lose any sleep. If I had to rate the Equalizer 2 out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Yes, a 6.5 out of 10, which is still a positive rating. But guys, that is just my opinion for the Equalizer 2. Have you seen it or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for The Equalizer 2, starring Denzel Washington and directed by Antoine Fuqua. And before you go, don't forget to always chase your dreams, because I'm chasing mine. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.